And now, Huntington University's Departments of Theater and Music proudly present the Drowsy Chaperone. Theater. Well, it's so disappointing, isn't it? You know what I do when I'm sitting in a darkened theater waiting for the show to begin? I pray. Oh, dear God, please let it be a good show. And let it be short. Oh, Lord in heaven, please. Two hours is fine. Three hours is too much. And keep the actors out of the audience, God. I didn't pay good money to have the fourth wall come crashing down around my ears. <laughs> I just want a story and a few good songs that will take me away. I just want to be entertained. I mean, isn't that the point? Amen. You know, there was a time when people sat in darkened theaters and thought to themselves, what have George and Ivor Gershwin got for us tonight? Or can Cole Porter pull it off again? Can you imagine? Now it's, please, Elton John, must we continue this charade? <laughs> it used to be, sitting there in the dark, you knew that when the show began, you would be taken to another world, a world full of color and music and glamour. And you thought to yourself, oh my, when are they going to bring up the lights? <laughs> oh, how things have changed. <laughs> Hello. Hey. How are we today? Yeah. How hey. <laughs> I'm feeling a little blue myself. You know, a little anxious for no particular reason. A little sad that I should feel anxious, anxious at this age. You know, a little self-conscious anxiety resulting in non-specific sadness. A state that I call blue. Anyway, whenever I'm feeling this way, blue, I like to listen to my music. So, I was going through my records this morning. Yes, records. And I was about to put on the soundtrack recording of Meredith Wilson's The Music Man. I had a craving for a young Ronnie Howard. But then I said, no, let's have a treat. Let's disappear for a while into the decadent world of the 1920s, where the champagne flowed while the caviar chilled and all the world was a party. For the wealthy, anyway. I dug about, and what did I find but one of my favorite shows, Gable and Stein's The Drowsy Chaperone. Remember? Music by Julie Gable, lyrics by Sidney Stein. It's a two-record set, remastered from the original recording, made in 1928. It's the full show with the original cast, including Beatrice Stockwell as the chaperone. Isn't she elegant? And this is a full 15 years before she became Dame Beatrice Stockwell. Can you believe it? Let me read to you what it says on the back. It says, mix-ups, mayhem, and a gay wedding. Well, of course, the phrase gay wedding has a different meaning now. <laughs> but back then, it just meant fun. And that's just what this show is, fun. So would you, would you indulge me? Would you let me play the record for you now? Yes, yes. I was hoping you would say yes. <laughs> You hear that static? I love that sound. To me, it's the sound of a time machine starting up. Now, let's visualize. Imagine, if you will, it's November 1928. You've just arrived at the doors of the Morosco Theater in New York. It doesn't exist anymore. It was torn down in 1982 and replaced with an enormous hotel. Unforgettable. You came by horse, I suppose. I mean, a horse-strong carriage. You weren't actually riding the horse. Anyway, it's very cold, and a heavy gray sleet is falling from the sky, but you don't care because you're going to see a Broadway show. Listen. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? It helps if you close your eyes. <laughs> Don't you just love overtures? <laughs> overtures are out of style now. I miss them. It's a polite way of beginning the evening. It's the show's way of welcoming you. Hello, welcome. The meal will be served shortly, but in the meantime, would you like an appetizer? That's what an overture is, a musical appetizer. A poo-poo platter of tunes, if you will. <laughs> oh, something new. 
Sounds like a dance tune, kind of rollicking, maybe involving pirates. Don't worry, there are no pirates. <laughs> And this is it. This is that special moment when the music starts to build and you know you're only seconds away from being transported. Madam. My dress, my dress, my fancy dress. I don't know why I'm wearing it, I must confess. My dress, my dress, I love my dress. Would someone tell me why I put it on? Yes, yes, your dress, your fancy dress. It was such a pleasure airing it, restitching and preparing it. God bless! Your dress, it's one fine dress, and I will tell you why you put it on. Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime. Madam, you're the hostess, and it's happy wedding time. Wedding bells will ding, wedding bells will dong, wedding bells will ding a ling, and we will ding along. Guests have come. Wedding guests are here. Wedding guests are at the door, and soon they will appear. I'm Robert, the bridegroom. I'm here to marry Janet, the star of Beltic's Follies, whom I love a lot. I'm George, yes, George, the best man, George. I'm honored to be doing what a best man ought. Ah, oh, Mrs. Tottendale, now don't you worry, I've got this whole wedding planned out. The key is organization. See, each string represents a task yet to be completed. Pay the musicians, yell at the florist, book the minister, this whole wedding's gonna run like clockwork. Oh, is there going to be a wedding? I'm Feltig, producer, I've lost my leading lady. I gotta stop this wedding or I might get shot. I'm Kitty, just Kitty, I came with Mr. Feltig. I'll be a leading lady if I get my shot. We're pastry chefs. We're pastry chefs. We cross our hands. We're pastry chefs. No bakery, our bakery is what we've got. I'm done for. Champagne makes 
me drowsy. Truly happening, truly happening. Thank you all for coming. I tell you, I must be some lucky fellow. Why, who would have thought that I, Robert Martins, would be marrying a glamorous showgirl, and that that glamorous showgirl would be willing to give up her successful career for me, Robert Martins. <laughs> now, if it weren't for prohibition, I would say let's raise a glass. Here, here! To Miss Janet Vandergraaf, the most beautiful girl in the world. Absolutely not! Excuse me? The groom mustn't see the bride on the day of the wedding. It's bad luck. I hope you heard that, because that's the plot, basically. <laughs> Hang on for the ride. <laughs> Breakfast will be served in the Arabian room. <laughs> Say, it's a little early in the day to be drinking, isn't it? I don't understand the question. <laughs> Well, listen, you keep Janet away from Robert. You're the chaperone. It's your only job. Aye, aye, mon capitan. <laughs> oh, Robert, who's my little monkey? I am. I'm your little monkey. <laughs> <laughs> so the bride and groom are whisked away and we turn our attention to the B plot, which involves the producer. Mr. Fratzig! Getting married and leaving show business. Mr. Fratzig! Doesn't she know I got obligations? Mr. I can be a leading lady. You said it yourself. I'm a useless for the chorus. Kitty, for the last time, you ain't got what it takes. But I've been taking lessons. Singing, acting, and ballet. Ballet? Yeah, and I'm pretty good, too. Last week, I auditioned for Swanee Lake. A little <laughs> annotation. Kitty and Feldzig were a couple in real life, Jack and Sadie Adler. Now, this is a familiar comic construct. A stupid woman and her long-suffering companion. Well, she appears stupid, but in the end, she does something clever and makes everyone wonder whether it's all just an act. The irony here is that Sadie actually was quite stupid. <laughs> Jack had to explain all the jokes to her, apparently. But still, she had a wonderful career on the stage. At that time, the theater was the only place where stupid people could earn a decent living. <laughs> this was before television, of course. <laughs> Kitty, I don't have time for this. Ah, petty bomb, Mr. Felsing. Perhaps a nice profiterole. Boys, girl, I I'm not hungry. Well, then perhaps we can give you something else that you want. Yeah, something that ain't food. What? Yeah, confusion is to be expected. Although we stand here before you in the guise of innocent pastry chefs, we're also and primarily employees of a certain individual. A certain individual? A certain individual. Who happens to be the largest single investor in Feldick's Follies. He's in a theater. As pastry chefs. To express his concerns about Miss Vandegraaff's impending nuptials. Specifically. And if she gets married and leaves the show, then, then there, there ain't, ain't no show. Say, 
Hey, don't I know you? No, you don't. Have you ever spent any time in Toledo? <laughs> Have you ever spent any time in a coma? <laughs> no, but I have a cousin in Seattle. Kitty, kids, tell your boss this wedding is never going to happen. You have my word. Oh, we'll take your word, all right. But to go back on that word would be a recipe for disaster. We hope we've made ourselves perfectly eclair. One cannoli home. You bis gotta be kidding me. A trifle much? Tot with me. Okay, drop the pastry chef routine. Alas, we ganache. We're on the lamb. Lamb's a nantra, ya macaroon. The gangsters were played by interchangeable vaudeville duo the Bovine siblings, Joanne and Peter Bovine. They were born Hannah and Mendel Mostokowitz, but were renamed to Ellis Island by a sarcastic immigration official. <laughs> they were an early example of the typical Broadway gangster, full of wordplay and stylized movements not very intimidating, unless you find dancers to be intimidating, which I do, but for reasons that would not be appropriate to this situation. <laughs> we'll leave the matter in your hands, Mr. Felsic. In the meantime, feel free to browse the Zoe Carousel. Yeah, try the Toledo surprise. It's, it's to, to die for. for. Oh. <gasps> oh! Holy cats, Mr. Felsic, the gangsters! Very perceptive, Kitty. Now go powder your face. Okay. <laughs> I've got to stop this wedding, but how? Oh, dear Lord in heaven, how? I always thought that moment was a little overplayed. <laughs> so with the story well on its way, let's go to the groom's room. <laughs> Show me those pearly whites. The groom was played by the dashing Percy Hyman. He started out as the Albright toothpaste man. His fabulous smile adorned every tube. Albright was hugely popular in the early 20s because it contained cocaine. <laughs> oh, it's true. If you looked at the label, it was the fifth ingredient down, right after sugar. Anyway, it wasn't long before he became a huge matinee idol. All right. Now, it's perfectly normal for a groom to be nervous on his wedding day. Is it? Of course. I love Percy Hyman. Now, some people say he was a bad actor, but to those people I say, shut up! <laughs> hey there, Mr. Mirror Man. Shaking and a quaking. Trembling like the Brady cats do. Something big be bothered. You've got cold feet, you can make them cold feet hot With a little rhythm, young feet, old feet Can be uncontrolled feet, you can make them cold feet Trot down the aisle, cross the arches They can learn to swing, I see toes Gotta find a new minister. Say, what are you up to? I'm singing a song an old black man taught me. A Dixie remedy to get rid of wedding jitters. You think you've got jitters? You've got the easy part. I've still gotta get rice, boutonnieres, and a minister. I've got the weight of the wedding on my shoulders. George, sounds to me like you've got cold feet. What do I got? Cold feet. What do I want? Bold feet. What do I do? Cold feet? No! You make the cold feet hot. Well. Ready, George? Here we go. 
celebrating his 100th birthday. To say that the passing years have taken their toll on him would be a grotesque understatement. <laughs> they wheeled him out and he had that wide-eyed expression of pained confusion that God reserves for the very, very old on their birthdays. You know, the one that says, who are you, who am I, and why is this cake on fire? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Anyway. Well, that's enough of that, dancing around like a fool. I'm sorry, George, I was just trying to calm my nerves. It is my wedding day, after all. Well, you could have snapped an ankle. Tap dancing is far too dangerous. Here, why don't you go out for a skate instead? <laughs> ha, George, what would I do without you? Oh, wait, no, 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 you can't go out looking like that. You might see Janet. Here, put on this blindfold. George, <laughs> you think of everything. Just looking out for you, my boy. And remember, no more tap dancing. Wedding bells will ring. Wedding bells will chime. Wedding bells will celebrate. Just ignore it. It does this occasionally. It rings. It will stop soon. Just ignore it. What? What do you want? Oh, well, that's it. The moment is ruined. Thank you, thank you, life. It's like a cell phone going off in a theater. God, I hate that. Hello, what are you doing? Oh, I'm at the theater, ruining the moment. How about you? Oh, I couldn't get out tonight, so I thought I'd ruin the moment by proxy. <laughs> sorry, sorry, let's just shake that off. Let's go back in our minds to 1928. They didn't have cell phones in 1928, but I'm sure they had something for the ruining of moments. Bugles or something. <laughs> Happy wedding time! So the scene shifts and we find the bride, the glamorous Janet Vandergraaf, entertaining questions from reporters as she lounges by the pool. Miss Vandegraaff, is it true you're giving up a successful career to marry a man you hardly know? Yes. Robert and I met on the Lido deck of the Ile de France. He amused me with stories of his father's oil interests. We spooned <gasps> briefly, and then he proposed. So you won't be returning to the stage ever? I shan't. You shan't? I shan't. Can we call you on that? Of course. <clears throat> One more question. Yes. Why in the world would anyone put olives in a Gibson? I got a question. How can you give up the footlights when you know very well you got grease paint in your veins? Victor, please. Oh, Janet, please, I'm begging you. Dump the mugs, stay with the follies. I'll give you anything you want. I'll, I'll, oh, fine. I'll put your name above mine on the marquee. Oh, oh Victor, if you think this is about vanity, you couldn't be any more wrong. I don't want to show off no more. I don't want to sing tunes no more. I don't want to ride moons no more. I don't want to show off. I don't want to wear this no more. Play the saucy Swiss Miss no more. Blow my signature 
no more. I don't want to show off. Oh, Janet, please. Don't try to control me. I've made up my mind. And that's it. I quit. I'm leaving it all behind. Gentlemen hoots no more. I don't wanna wear fruits no more. I don't wanna show off. She don't wanna show off no more. Not me. to continue a life on the stage. Can't you see it's killing her soul? Oh, don't worry, kids. This isn't over yet. Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't do an encore. I don't want to encore no more. Keep them shouting for more, more, more. I disappear through the floor no more. I don't want to show oh.
Why? She was the oops girl. Remember? Surely you remember the oops girl. Don't you people read? She was billed as the girl whose sexual energy was so great that it caused the men around her to have accidents. Spill their drinks, drive their cars into trees. And she would go, oops. Well, I'm not really doing it justice, but people ate it up. <laughs> she made a whole series of films, Oops, The Oops Girl, Oops Girl Come Home, and Oops Girl at Sea, which won an Oscar for special effects. <laughs> okay, begging and groveling didn't work. Now on to plan B. For that, I need an accomplice. Someone gullible with loose morals. I need a, uh, what do you call him, a, a European. La 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 In walks Aldolfo, self-proclaimed ladies' man. Aldolfo is played by former silent film star and world-class alcoholic Roman Bartelli. He was the one who later drank himself to death at a chateau in Nice, remember? It was five days before they found the body, and by that time it had been partially consumed by his poodles? Well, he was only partially consumed. Excuse me, I don't believe we've met. I am... Aldolfo! You are Aldolfo? Yes, I am! Aldolfo! Not the Aldolfo! Yes, I am! Aldolfo! Uh, funny, <laughs> you don't look like a scoundrel. Yes, I, what? What, just now? I overheard the groom saying, Aldolfo is a scoundrel. I just heard him say that. Aldolfo is a scoundrel! Those very words. Aldolfo is a scoundrel. It's like I'm hearing it again. This is outrageous! He says this to peoples? to beautiful ladies yeah. with breasts for making love. Why, I must, I must. You must, you must take matters into your own hands. Yes. <laughs> I must take this groom into my hands and kill him. Yes! No, don't kill him. Just hurt him enough so he can't get married. Show me to this groom. Wait. What? What kind of man is this groom? A big man? Well. A burly fellow. Well, he's big on the outside. No, no, no. Adolfo will not fight big men. Only small, pale, breezy little dwarf people. But Adolfo can punch far away. But no big man. So you're a lover, not a fighter. Yes. Adolfo is a lover of beautiful ladies. Some say I am the king of romance. Well, you know what they say. The best way to get revenge on a man is through his door. No. The best way to get revenge on a man is through his... Zindo! No. <laughs> revenge on a man through his... To his... There is no other way. <laughs> I'm not Santa Claus coming down chimney. Through... <laughs> through his woman. Ah, his, his woman. Yes, Adolfo, you must seduce his woman. His woman. <laughs> his bride. Aldolfo will make love to this bride. That will show people Aldolfo is no scoundrel. Show me to this bride. Wait. What? What kind of woman is this bride? A big woman? No. A burly woman? No, she's the cat's pajamas. Pajamas? She's a looker, an attractive woman. Huh. Show me to this cat in pajamas. Aldolfo will make her purr. Stop it! Like a cat in pajamas! Ah! <laughs> Roman Bartelli. Roman Bartelli chewing the scenery. You certainly couldn't get away with a performance like that nowadays, could you? Mature contemporary audiences are too sophisticated to enjoy broad racial stereotypes on stage, so we banish them to Disney. <laughs> Let the children sort it out. <laughs> the pastry chefs have been kind enough to provide the liquor for the party. But remember, Underling, we have to be discreet. Yes, madam. It is prohibition after all. I'm aware of that, madam. We'll have to use code words. For instance, if someone asks for a glass of ice water, it means they want a glass of vodka. Have you got that? Yes, madam. Are you sure? Maybe you should write it down. I understand, madam. A glass of ice water is a glass of vodka. What's a glass of ice water? Vodka. Ice water? Vodka. Ice vodka. Oh, well, that's settled then. One last thing to do. Underling, 
Might I please have a glass of ice water? I found our meeting with the pastry chefs to be rather trying and would enjoy a glass of refreshing ice water. Your ice water, madam. <laughs> that was pure vodka, you poop! I hate this scene. Well, now I do need a glass of ice water. A glass of ice water, madam. Yes, ice water. Are you going deaf? Would that I were. You can see where this is going, can't you? It's really just a series of spit takes. Your ice water, madam. <laughs> that was pure vodka, you poop! You know, in some ways, the drowsy chaperone was quite progressive. An actress playing a gangster, for instance. Your ice water, madam. <laughs> that was pure vodka, you poop! Yes, some elements were quite progressive. Others were stale in 1928. You know what? I'm just going to skip ahead. Bring out my eyebrows, madam. For heaven's sake, why? I'm going to find some lime juice and make myself a gimlet. <laughs> now, you may be asking yourself, what was that routine doing in the show? Well, it's very simple. There's a song coming up, and they needed something to allow for the set change. It's mechanics. Now, this next scene is really interesting. It's the only time in the whole show that Jane Roberts and Beatrice Stockwell are alone together on stage. Jane Roberts was an emerging star. In a few hours, I'm going to be Mrs. Robert Martin. <gasps> My head is spinning. But Beatrice Stockwell was already well-established and a force to contend with. Yes. Life is a mad whirlwind. I'm so full of apprehension. But I suppose that's normal, considering the circumstances. Have you ever been married, chaperone? No, I drink for pleasure, not out of necessity. <laughs> You're an ice water, madam. I'm afraid we were fresh out of olives. Have you ever been married, underling? Heavens no, madam. If I'm going to serve a woman, I prefer to be paid for my efforts. <laughs> Oh, you too. I know it seems crazy to give up a successful career for a man I hardly know. But somehow, for some reason, when I look into his eyes, his big monkey eyes, oh, gee, I get all woozy. That's love, isn't it? Mm, not necessarily. The wooziness can be caused by any number of things. For example, I'm woozy right now, and I'm certainly not in love. Beatrice Stockwell was famous for her rousing anthems. She entertained and inspired the troops in every major world conflict, up to and including the Falklands War. Of course, by that time, she was in her late 80s, and her anthems didn't so much rouse as stupefy. <laughs> Still, she, de she demanded that a rousing anthem be included in everything she ever did, even if it wasn't appropriate. But you just couldn't say no to her. That's star power. Really, Chaperone, you're not being the least bit helpful. Couldn't you at least allay my fears with a few choice words of inspiration? Inspiration? Really, dear, that's not my forte. Yes, but if you... As we stumble along on life's funny journey, as we stumble our way into the blue, And we look there, seeking answers anywhere, never sure of where to turn or what to do. Still we bumble our way through life's crazy labyrinth, we knowing left from right nor right from wrong. Along. <laughs> that was quite inspiring, Chaperone, but I still don't see how that pertains to my crimes! <laughs> it's a dismal little world in which we live. It'll bore you till you've got nothing left to give. 
Seven overrated wonders, seven underwhelming seas, six excruciating continents. Antarctica, oh please. Antarctica, oh please. <laughs> Still ya mustn't let it lick ya, this planet oh so bland. Keep your eyeball on the highball in your hand. As we stumble along, cross life's crowded dance floor. As we push and we shove, we live and we learn. And when we finally leave the bar, regardless of the needs and the concerns of others. My mother was like that. <laughs> that was quite nice, chaperone, but I'm still conflicted. Oh, please, just tell me, is Robert the man for me? My dear, that is something you'll have to decide for yourself. But I just don't know if he loves me. Why don't you ask him? Why don't you say, Roger, do you love me? It's Robert. <laughs> and I am not allowed to see him. In fact, it's your job to keep me away from him. You're right, and I take my job very seriously. Mm. However, just at this moment, I'm feeling terribly, terribly drowsy, and I'm afraid I'll have to have myself a lighty down. <laughs> now, whatever you do, don't go wandering throughout the garden, seeking out your fiancé to ask him the question upon which your future happiness depends. Oh, thank you, chaperone. I just have to know if he loves me. Such a skinny little fool. Still, I envy her. Oh, when will love come crashing through my door? La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Look who it is! It's Aldolfo come to seduce the bride! I am Aldolfo! Try not to think of the poodles while you're listening to this part. <laughs> I am Aldolfo, and you are bride. No, I am not. What? This is bridal sweet. You are the only one here, therefore you must be bride. Interesting argument, but I'm afraid you are a moron. What? Me? No bride. Perhaps I could take a message. Yes, uh, very good. Dear Bandograph Bride, <laughs> I must make love to you and transport you to the place of ecstasy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Sooner is better. Signed, Aldalfo, King of Romance. Whoop, 
you saw through my little ruse, you found me out. Ah, so you are the bride. Apparently, yes. Take me a doll face. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no, no. Not a doll face. A doll foe. You must remember my name when we were making love and you are screaming. You must say the right name or it will spoil everything. How can I make you remember? <laughs> I'm sure that you have heard the name Adolfo, a ladies' man who wins the claim Adolfo. Well, lovely miss, I am the same Aldalfo. I introduce myself. I am Aldalfo. Nice to meet you. Shall we? Not so fast. So just in case you didn't hear Aldalfo, I'll try to make it very clear, Aldalfo. <laughs> the lovely ladies always hear Aldalfo when I repeat myself. I am Maldolfo. Understood. I can sing it high. Maldolfo! I can sing it low. Maldolfo! I can sing it very fast. Maldolfo! I can sing it very slowly. I do it now. But it would take hours. <laughs> now, let us see if you can remember my name. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> so who's the fellow that you see? Aldolfo. And how should you refer to me? Aldolfo. And who is it I'll always be? Aldolfo. Now sing it proudly. You are Aldolfo. Now, let me spell it out for you. For all of you lovely ladies who didn't hear for some reason because maybe you are hard of hearing or something. I don't know. It goes. Ah, lover. I mean, a real Latin lover, not a buffoon. But that's what musicals are all about, right? Romantic fantasy, falling in love at the drop of a hat, spontaneous tangoing, suddenly finding yourself in an insanely romantic setting. It's a dint waiting to happen. La di da di da da di da da. La di da di da da. Robert, look out! Don't worry, madam. I'm getting married today, so I have to wear a blindfold. A blindfold? <laughs> I'm sorry. Who am I speaking to, anyhow? Why, it's me. I mean, Mimi. Mimi from France. This scene couldn't be more ridiculous. <laughs> so, you are marrying Jeanette Van de Graaff, no? A oui. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ah, yes, yeah, she's very beautiful. Oui. And glamorous. Oh, oui, oui. Is it true that she has an exceptionally broad range and excels at playing both comedic and dramatic roles? Say, I'm having trouble placing your accent. What part of France are you from? Oh, 
Path where they make the toast. <laughs> you were telling me about your, um, how do you say it in English, fiance? That's right. So tell me, when was the moment that you knew she was the one for you? It's a funny story, actually. You see, we were standing on the Lido deck on the Ile de France. Yes. And I was amusing her with stories of my father's oil interests. And then what happened? Well, then I looked into her eyes her big, glamorous eyes, and I felt all woozy. And then you fell. And then you fell? Yes. Woo! <laughs> right on my keister. And I said, well, I guess I don't have my sea legs yet. But we haven't left the dock. That's what she said. And that's when I knew it must be love. And then what happened? Well, then I said, there was a time I could stop on a dime. Forbearance was one of my talents But since you've been around I can't hold my ground I'm consistently losing my balance I'm an accident waiting to happen I'm a mishap about to ensue I'm the toy on the stair A three-legged chair a hem that's been caught by a shoe. When my two lovesick arms started flapping, there was nothing my ankles could do. I'm an accident waiting to happen. So how be I happen to you? And then what happened? Well, then she joined in. When men say I'm sweet and they fall at my feet, my heart doesn't beat any faster. But when you lose control, it touches my soul. So I'm bracing myself for disaster. You're an accident waiting to happen, a catastrophe destined to be. I'm the rags in the cellar A broken umbrella A, a branch, branch hanging loose from a tree I can see myself jumping and clapping For a man who lives dangerously You're an accident waiting to happen Then what happened? Well, then we kissed. <laughs> I'm an accident waiting to happen. So hurry and happen to me. Everything always works out in musicals. In the real world, nothing ever works out. And the only people who burst into song are the hopelessly deranged. Mr. Feltzig! Where's that philandering foreigner? Mr. Feltzig! How long can it take to seduce one bride? Mr. Feltzig, you don't need Janet no oh, more. Pity not now. I've been working on a mind reading act. Presenting Kelly the Incomprehensible. Now think of something. Oh, I'm thinking of something, all right. Oh. <gasps> Wait, I'm getting it. Pick up some milk. Yes. And a loaf of rye bread. And don't forget to shave your legs. <sighs> You're reading your own mind. You idiot! <laughs> 
No wonder, it was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Faldi! It would seem the wedding is proceeding according to schedule. No, it's saying you received your just desserts. What do you think, partner? Should we whip up something special for Mr. Feldzig? Yeah, how about a Toledo surprise? Inspired, Jay. <laughs> a Toledo surprise? <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard of that. Oh, no, you haven't. Those people who have heard of it, I generally never hide from again. Oh. We'll share the recipe with you. Feast! You chop the nuts! And then you pound the dough! Then you bake it up. Then you got a Toledo. Toledo surprise! Uh, could you run that by me again? It's a very simple recipe, Mr. Feldzig. Feist! You chop the nuts! Then you pound the door! And then you pick it up nice and slow. <laughs> then you got a Toledo. Toledo surprise! All right. Oh, uh, hold it. What style? What grace? What rhythm? Now open your fists. Shake them. Now give me that recipe <laughs> one more time. Da 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 da. Go. Chop the nuts, pound the dough, bake it up front, nice and slow. Then you got a Toledo. Toledo surprise. Sell it. Hit the peach, peel the skin, push it up, throw it in. That's a taste of Toledo. Toledo surprise. First you beat it up, then you sweet it up. If you heat it up, if it tries to rise, don't let it. It's, it's a snap. snap. Try it, folks, with your whites. Split your yolks. Surprise! You kids are naturals. Honest? Keep it up, I'll go work on the contracts. Hey! Five, six, seven, eight! Hey, Mr. Felsen! What's going on here? Kitty, I'm developing a new act with the pastry chef. Toledo Surprise! Wait, you're putting gangsters in the show and you won't even put me in? They're not even part of the young men! Shh! You got it all wrong, Kitty! The new act! It's for you, and these are your backup dancers. Backup dancers? How in cats? So why that hot Toledo dies to my libido? Good, yes, indeed, oh, sugar be yum yum. <laughs> Surprise! Wedding is off! <gasps> what? For the love of all humanity, why? Adolfo has made love to the bride. Oh! oh. Ew. Ew. That's not the bride, you idiot! That's the chaperone! What? The wedding is on! The wedding is off! <gasps> what? Robert kissed a French girl. Her name is Mimi. She's very beautiful. I couldn't help it, Janet. She was just like you, only French. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, sweet mother of pearl! <laughs> A wedding, madam. Oh, is there going to be a wedding? Not anymore! Oh, what a tragedy. <laughs> what a wonderful, wonderful tragedy! Clear the floor, boys. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> First you beat it up. Then you sweet it up. Then you heat it up. If it tries to rise, don't let it. <laughs> Toledo surprise! Surprise? Wait till it's ready! Surprise? Wait till it's ready! Surprise? Wait till it's ready! Now it's looking ready! Surprise! <laughs> makes me twitch, makes me shake. This dessert takes a cake. Hits me like a torpedo. Toledo surprise!
Yes, but the tune is so infectious. Oh, Robert, this is the saddest day of my life. <laughs> intermission. At least it would be if we were actually sitting, sitting in the Morosco Theater watching the Drowsy Chaperone, which of course we are not. I don't like intermissions. They ruin the magic, you know. They yank you back into reality. One moment you're lost in a glamorous world of music and romance, and then bang, you're surrounded by tourists, crinkly candy wrappers, and nattering about the lack of women's restrooms. It's cruel. Mm. Oh, it's a power bar. I have a bit of a blood sugar issue. I have to eat small meals all day long or I get jittery. I know it's rude, but you wouldn't like the alternative, believe you me. Believe you me. <laughs> I remember my wedding day. I didn't eat breakfast and the ceremony wasn't until four in the afternoon. Ah, I do, I do! <laughs> Are you surprised that I was married? Well, there you are. You shouldn't go making assumptions about people, should you? I'm a very complicated person. I have to pee now. I'll be quick, I promise. And while I'm gone, you can listen to the beginning of Act Two. Oh, all right, go pee if you must. <laughs> But, Emperor, sometimes a different outlook can change your point of view. What? Precisely. What is it about the Asians that fascinates Caucasians? What is it about the Asians that's so nice? Is it the wontons, the egg rolls, the rice? Perhaps it's Gouda or Confucius and their excellent advice. What is it about Caucasians that mystifies we Asians? What is it about Caucasians that's so odd? They call a blitzy lady a broad. They have hair upon their chest and they only have one god? Impossible! Sorry, sorry! That song was not from the Drowsy Chaperone. That was from another musical entirely. I have a woman who comes in once a month. Can you say that? I have a woman? Anyway, she cleans the things that I absolutely refuse to clean. She's very good, but she has an annoying habit of putting my records away and in the wrong sleeves. Even though I say, no touch records, Carmela, no touch records. 
I suppose if I spoke to her in complete sentences, she'd stop touching my records. <laughs> Anyway, that song started act two of another Gable and Stein musical called The Enchanted Nightingale, a degrading piece of shinwazery about an emperor who was told by a magic bird to marry his American elocutionist instead of his betrothed, and he ends up building the Great Wall of China. <laughs> a slap in the face to 4,000 years of Chinese history. But still, it had some wonderful tunes. That was Beatrice Stockwell as American Lady. And did you recognize Roman Bartelli as the emperor? Yes, he was a man of a thousand accents, all of them insulting. <laughs> Act two of The Drowsy Chaperone begins with this. A haunting lament from a very depressed bride. She sings it standing on her balcony, bathed in the pale blue light of a sympathetic moon which is ridiculous because it's the middle of the day. Now, while, while, while you're listening to this, try to ignore the lyrics. I know it will be difficult, but just try to block them out. They're really not the best, but the tune is beautiful, and it truly communicates the bride's state of mind. Just ignore the lyrics. I put a monkey on a pedestal and tried to make that monkey stay and he did for a time but he needed to climb and with other monkeys play far away he left his jacket on the pedestal beside his tiny rusty cup and I haven't got the strength to pick them up. Oh, monkey, 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 broke my heart in two. But I'll always save that pedestal for you. I'm just going to pour myself a brandy. Come, my little monkey. Come, my little monkey, do. The melody is so simple, it just floats in the air. And I must confess, I always get a little bit misty when I think of that tiny jacket lying on that pedestal, its long sleeves dangling on the floor. Oh, oh monkey, monkey, monkey. monkey. monkey.
and then something starts ringing. What a beautiful day for a wedding. Shall I have the pews removed now, or would you prefer I wait until morning? I'm going to stop here because I don't want this number ruined by a ringing telephone. Here. Here, we have two vaudeville performers who have slipped through the cracks of time. They are Noel Fitzpatrick and Ukulele Lil. I don't know anything about them. I suppose Ukulele Lil played the ukulele, although she doesn't in this show. Actually, I tried to find out more about her. I looked through all my books, I even tried the internet, but all my searches ended up with Tiny Tim's autopsy photographs. <laughs> anyway, they're both charming. Why would you have the pews removed? The bride has called off the wedding, madam. Oh, underling, never listen to a bride on her wedding day. Love is a very complex emotion, underling. Yes, madam. You can be very close to someone one minute, and the next minute, why, you just want to strangle them. Do you understand? I am familiar with the urge to strangle, yes. <laughs> you see, that's just the nature of love. <laughs> love makes lovers worry, love makes lovers fret. But here's a fact on which we can depend. Just like long ago when Romeo loved Juliet, love is always lovely in the end. But Romeo and Juliet is a tragedy, madam. Oh, I never read reviews. <laughs> love can start a quarrel, love can cause a tin. But love has always been a trusty friend. Twas a happy fate for Hank the Eight and Anne Boleyn. Love is always lovely in the end. Might I remind you, madam, that Anne Boleyn lost her head? Yes, she was in love. Love was good for Eve and Adam. Here we go again. And Samson and Delilah, too. Good grief, may I pose a question? Madam. Oh, yes, of course. Why does nothing I say to you ever get through? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Love is always lovely in the end. Oh, I found that quite taxing, madam. Excuse me while I pour myself a glass of ice water. <laughs> love sneaks up behind you, love drops from above. But love would never consciously offend. Love has certainly been kind to me and my true love. Love is always lovely in the end. But your late husband was a brute. I don't mean him, you silly coot. <laughs> love is always lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Love, love is always lovely in the end. end. Love is always lovely in the end. Charming, but to be frank, on some level, that number ticks me off. 
Now, I'm going to say something here, and yes, I have been drinking, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that love is not always lovely in the end. Often in the end, there are lawyers. <laughs> and another thing, and another thing! Surely someone was aware of the awkward sexual connotation of that title. Love is always lovely in the end. I mean, is it just me? I guess what I'm saying is that number is naive and irresponsibly so. Sorry, I just thought that needed to be said for the benefit of the young people. I won't interrupt anymore. Oh, there's a moment coming up that I've become obsessed with. Chaperone. Chaperone. Oh. Oh, there you are. Oh, Chaperone, I'm in a terrible state. You certainly are. You can't go to a wedding looking like that. Oh, you poor dear, haven't you heard? The wedding's been called off. Not your wedding, mine. Oh, that reminds me, might I borrow your veil? You're getting married? But to who? <laughs> oh, la, la, la. Beautiful lady with baffled expression. <laughs> You're marrying Aldolfo? I know, it's surprising. But when I look into his eyes, his big, clumsy eyes, I get all drowsy. And that's love, isn't it? <laughs> yes, dear, that <laughs> is love. Help me. <laughs> oh, there you are. All right. I'm gonna lay all my cards on the table here. I got a weak heart, can't take the pressure, and if this thing goes on any longer, the old ticker's gonna give out. So please tell me, is there going to be a wedding or not? Yes. Oh, thank the good Lord in heaven. Aldolfo and the chaperone are getting married. What? I have wonderful news. There's going to be a wedding. We know. You know? Yes, we just heard. But who told you? I did. But how did you know? What difference does it make? Mrs. Tottendale and I are to be married in the garden at 7.30 this evening. What? What? Oh, yes. Oh, congratulations to everyone. Say, what kind of cockamamie wedding is this? Everybody's getting married but the bride and the groom. Janet? Janet? Oh, there you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. Oh, hello, Mr. Martin. Now, Janet, don't be like that. Can't you find it in your heart to marry me? I mean, it is our wedding day after all, and George has gone through all this trouble, and well, I do love you more than I can say. But you kissed another woman. I know, and I just can't understand it. I know this may sound ridiculous, but when I was kissing that other woman, why, it was just like I was kissing you. Oh, Robert, you were kissing me. You mean your Mimi? <laughs> well, that French accent was remarkably accurate. Thank you. <laughs> I developed it while playing the role of Monique and hold that baguette. Janet? Janet? Oh, there you are! Before you do anything else, think about this. No matter how well you play the part of the happy wife, you'll never ever get a standing ovation. <gasps> oh, I just don't know! Oh, I'm so confused! Oh, chaperone, please, I beg you just this one time, give me some advice that is coherent and appropriate to the situation. Should I marry Robert? And this is it. This is the moment I was talking about. Not only the culmination of the plot, but a moment that has fascinated me more than any other, and that has brought me back to this record again and again. Here it is. Well, my advice to you is... And this is it. Listen. Well, you can. You see? You can't quite make out what she says because someone drops a cane. I'll play it for you again. While you can. Is she saying live while you can or leave while you can? While you can. I mean, it is Beatrice Stockwell, so it might just be a cynical quip. But this is a wedding after all, and that's what you think when you're standing at the altar, isn't it? Live or leave. And you have to live. Because you do love her in some way. It's not an exact science. An arrow doesn't come out of the sky and point to the one you're supposed to be with. So one day you say it to someone, you say, I love you. And you basically phrase it as a question, but they accept it as fact. And then suddenly there she is standing in front of you in a $3,000 dress with tears in her eyes and her nephew made the hoopah. So what do you do? Do you say, I was kidding, I was joking? <laughs> no, you can't. You live, right? You choose to live. 
And then for a couple of months, you stare at the alien form in bed beside you, and you think to yourself, who are you? Who are you? And then one day you say it out loud. <laughs> then it's a trial separation and couples counseling, and all your conversations are about her eating disorder and your Zoloft addiction, and you're constantly redefining and reevaluating and revisiting before you finally lose the deposit on the house, and the whole relationship ends on a particularly ugly note with your only copy of Gypsy spinning through the air and smashing against the living room wall! But still, in the larger sense, in a broader sense, it's better to have lived than left, right? Well, you can. You have no idea how many times I've listened to that. Oh, chaperone, you certainly have a way with words. Robert, my answer is, Yes, I will marry you. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, <laughs> Looks like this one's a done deal. Now you're in trouble. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, but there is. I found a replacement. A new leading lady. Drum roll, please. Presenting. <gasps> Kitty, the Incredible! <laughs> okay, Kitty, now concentrate and show them how you can read my mind. My mind. <gasps> Kitty, will you marry me? <laughs> Holy cats, Mr. Felsing, yes! Isn't she amazing? <laughs> well, what are you all waiting for? You ladies go get on your frillies and we'll all get married in one big clump. That's how they do it in Utah. <laughs> well, George, I don't know how you managed to pull it off. Four weddings all in one day. Looks like you're everyone's best man now. I am? Yeah, oh, sure. Yes, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, well, I George. am. Uh, hee hee, hooray! Hee hee, hooray! He's George, that's George, the best man, George. I'm honored to be doing what a best man ought. He's basking in the glory of a 512 thought. Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime, wedding bells will celebrate a happy wedding time. I forgot the minister. <laughs> Who the heck are you? I'm Trix, the aviatrix, queen of the sky. And off to Rio for carnival. Wait, the captain of a ship can perform a marriage. Yes. yes. And the pilot is comparable to a captain. Yes. yes. An airplane is a kind of sheep. <laughs> like a sheep of the air. Some call it an air sheep. Oh, ship. Yes. <laughs> I got it. Tricks, you can marry them and we'll all have the honeymoon in Rio. Oh, May bring a tear to the eye But what a thrill being lovers Trill I do, I do in the sky When vows are said in the middle Now bees and daffodils fly But heart's conscience, sweethearts Gosh, I do, I do in the sky 
Mr. Super. Oh, God. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Your lights are out. Yes. Yeah, we had to turn the power off because we're replacing the breaker panel in the basement. Yes. So we replaced it, but when we turned the power off, all the breakers and all the apartment stripped. Yes. It's what happens, it's normal. Yes. So I've got to reset your breakers? <coughs> Now? It'll only take a second. All right, all right, all right. Because I tried calling you earlier before, but there was no answer. Oh, I've been having a problem with the phone. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> music was that? It was just music. It was a show. You know, a musical. Do you like musicals? No. I love musicals. Me and the wife go all the time. It's amazing what they can do on stage these days. Did you see Miss Saigon? They landed a helicopter on the stage in that. Yeah, I mean, I've seen them all. I've seen Cats. I've seen Les Mis. I've seen Saturday Night Fever. I mean, put up for the movie. Really? Well, goodbye. <laughs> oh, well, that's it. The moment is ruined. One note away from the end of the show, and the mood is broken. I should just play the record again from the beginning. No, I can't do that, can I? Oh, it's so frustrating. You have to understand, I love this show so much, and I've never even seen it. My mother gave me the record. This was just before my father left us. Oh, he didn't leave because of the record, although I'm sure it didn't help matters. <laughs> Look, I know it isn't a perfect show. The spit take scene is lame and the monkey motif is labored. But none of that matters. It does what a musical is supposed to do. It takes you to another world and it gives you a little tune to carry with you in your head, you know? A little something to help you escape from the dreary horrors of the real world. A little something for when you're feeling blue, you know? As we stumble along on life's funny journey. As we stumble along into the blue. We look here and we look there, <laughs> seeking answers anywhere, <laughs> never sure of where to turn or what to do. I'm an accident waiting to happen. Still we bumble our way through life's crazy land. Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime.
Thank you.